Should you upgrade to the M4 MacBook Air? Do I need it or Let's talk about it. This M4 chip could change my life. Welcome back to the channel. So I get asked this question all the time. A lot of people ask me in the comments, I have an M1 or an M2 MacBook Air. Should I be upgrading to the new, brand new M4 MacBook Air? Is it worth it? Well, first of all, if you have a dinosaur like the one sitting right here, an old Air like this, it's an Intel one, you should probably upgrade at this point. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about if you have the M1 or the M2 Air, it makes the decision quite a bit harder. All right, for starters, quick background on me. So I own an M2 MacBook Air sitting right here. I use it almost every single day. My wife's got an M1 MacBook Air. That's the one I gave her. I used to have that as well. I've made a ton of videos on these things on my channel. So definitely check out my channel if you're interested in one of these things. So I think I know a little bit about this. And on top of it, I was just actually over the weekend provided an M4 MacBook Air and I ran some tests on it. So I have a good idea of all of them right now. Now what makes this decision so hard and even harder now is some of the sales that they're having right now. Take a look at my screen over here. This was actually on sale just last week. This is gonna be a M2 chip MacBook Air with 16 gigs of RAM for $699. That makes the decision really, really difficult because if you have one of these things or if you have the M1, you can't really sell it for that much more anymore. They're really kind of hurting your resale value here. By selling brand new ones for $699, where does that leave your used one? I mean, for example, if you have an M1 MacBook Air and you wanna sell it on eBay, take a look over here. A lot of the prices right now, they're around $400. And uh, this is actually very good condition. It's the, got the eight gigs, obviously it's the base model. But you're gonna see these for sometimes as low as $375. So if you're gonna be upgrading to the M4, right now, it's, you know, obviously you're gonna get hit a little bit because of these sales coming out. There's just nothing you can do about it, but it's just kind of one more factor if you gotta weigh the decision. If you could get more money for these things, it would make the decision that much easier. So this brings us right back to the same question. Should we be upgrading an M1 or an M2 MacBook Air up to the M4 MacBook Air? So in this video, I'm gonna go through a whole bunch of benchmarks. A couple are gonna be very surprising. And then we're gonna go through six different games that I found, just random games. And we're gonna to get to frames per second on those games, running it on the M4 MacBook Air. So if you're interested, just sit back and relax and enjoy the video, kick up your feet, and let's get into it. Okay, let's start with the first benchmark here. And this is probably the biggest shocker of them all. Now this is actually gonna be testing all of these devices here all with 256 gigabytes, so the base model more or less, as far as the, the SSD, right? That's, that's important here. So take a look at my screen for number one. These are the writes. This is Blackmagic SSD speed test writes, megabytes per second. This is the M1, the M2, the M4 down here. So look at this, the M1 is 2190 on the writes. The M2 dropped all the way down. Remember we had that problem with having only one chip in it. That was 1580, so we had a big drop there. But the M4 over here is only 2100. So it's actually 4.1% slower than the M1. So we actually lost 4.1% of write speed on this actual new Mac. Now we'll get into why that is, I think. It's not a huge issue, but I mean, it gets worse here with the reads. So here's the reads on the M1, 2896. Obviously the M2 dropped all the way to 1650, but then we went back up to 2750, but look at it, it's still not as much as the M1. We actually dropped, it's 5.3% slower than the M1 if you look at that. So the reason I think this is going on, I think Apple fixed the issue. They got a general idea of where they want the speed to be, but they can't make it too, too fast, I think, because there's no fan in that system. You got the faster, hotter CPU as well. So they're probably dealing with some thermals there as well, and they don't want to really beef that up too much. That's my take on it, but it's just interesting to note that you're going to get a little bit slower as SSD speeds on the base models, which was kind of a shock to me. But it's really the CPU and the GPU speeds really that's gonna shine here. So if you take a look over here, this is Geekbench 6 single core, single core scores really. Here's the M1, it's 2360. It jumped on the M2 to 2562. I mean, I've seen this a little bit higher than the 26s, 2700s. And then we move all the way up here to 3680. So this is actually 56.4% faster than the M1. You can see a big jump here. I mean, look at the scores. I mean, they're not quite double, but they're getting up there. So you can see that obviously in single core scores, this is gonna mean that your computers are a lot more snappy doing all things like browsing the web and stuff like that. It's gonna make a major difference and you're gonna notice things, very, you know, a lot, just a lot snappier overall. So it even gets better, you know, obviously with multi-core here, it even gets better for the M4 here. And this is where we're gonna take a look. Here it is at 8540 on the M1. This is multi-core Geekbench 6. The M2 went up to 9628. Then we see this giant jump. Obviously I don't have the M3 in here, but we went from the M2 to the M4. 
up to 14,800. I've seen this actually a little bit higher too, around 15. But even at this right here, it's 73% faster than the M1. And that basically means if that gets a little bit faster, like I said, I've seen it a little bit faster, not with my testing, but other tests. So you might get up to about 80% faster. So we're basically talking double the speed here on the CPUs as far as, you know, Geekbench. I mean, this, these are all kind of, you know, obviously relative. I mean, they're just, just they're still, you know, I mean, we're not doing real world testing here, but it gives you at least a general idea. Okay, next we tested Speedometer 3.0. What this test basically does is it's a good test to tell you if you're browsing with a bunch of tabs and going through websites and stuff like that, how snappy is your, your computer gonna seem to you? This is really what, important for probably 90% of people out there is gonna be that responsiveness of the system. And take a look, it's a pretty big difference. So if you look over here, the M1 was at 29, it got on this Speedometer 3.0 test, 39 for the M2, so we see a jump there of quite a bit, but now we're up to 48. It's 64% faster than the M1 here on the Speedometer 3.0. So if you can imagine, that's going to be anywhere from like 60 to 70% faster and just doing daily tasks and making sure that things come up quicker, they load quicker. It's just you know, overall better, I mean, as far as the snappiness of the system. So I think this is going to make a big difference for a lot of people. And uh, But again, we're going to keep talking about this at the end of it and figure out if we actually need to upgrade. But I think this is a big one. Okay, so next we want to test a little bit of the GPU on these synthetic tests, obviously. So let's go ahead and test Geekbench 6 Metal score. So Geekbench 6 Metal. So we take a look over here. This is going to be 31,900 for the M1, 45,500 for the M2, 53,020 for basically the M4. We can see a massive jump here, 66.1% faster. And again, this is all relative, I mean, as far as what you're going to notice here, but the graphics are going to perform a lot better for you. And we're going to equate this to gaming in a second when I show you six different games. But overall, I think it's a pretty good increase here. And again, you have to justify it yourself, but it's, a, it's big enough where I think we're starting to get to the area where M1s should start upgrading. Okay, the next test we're going to do here is Cinebench 2024. This has got kind of a combination of graphics and CPU power. If we look over here at the chart here, M1 was at 401, the M2 was 551, but look at this, 778, 94% faster when you combine both of them. And this is where it really shines here. Again, CPU and GPU kind of performance combined. It's actually going to be basically double the speed, double the speed of the M1 if you can imagine that. So if you have an M1 and you think it's fast, this is going to be twice the speed. And that's pretty incredible overall, right? So I think right here, this, this is, if any of the charts justify it, this is the one that might justify it the most. So is battery life important to you? Well, this test could matter too. So take a look here. Battery life test, hours and minutes. So the MacBook Air M4 here got 18 hours and 31 minutes on this test. And then the MacBook Air M1 only got 13 hours and 19 minutes right there. So that's obviously a ma massive difference of over five hours. Now, both of them have phenomenal batteries compared to you know Windows laptops for sure. But I mean, you may not get these exact results, but you're gonna definitely get a few more hours when you upgrade. So if that's like a deciding factor, which it probably shouldn't be because it's so many hours to begin with, but if it is, this is a good reason to upgrade. All right, really quickly, we're gonna go through now six different games, and these are just kind of random games I wanted to test out and see what the frames per second is with the M4 MacBook Air. So the first one we're gonna test here is called Death Stranding, and I don't know if you guys have seen this game before, but it's kind of a common game a lot of people test, and I test a lot of these common games just to give you kind of some information so you can compare it to older, you know, older versions, all right? So here we go. It's right here. So the M1 Air got 31 frames per second. The M2 Air got 46 frames per second. This one's actually, the M4 down here is getting 60 to 80 frames per second on this game. The settings are 1080p default with the Metal FX quality here setting. And uh, you can see it's 72 up here, but it's about 60 to 80 I was getting on this game. And overall, I think that's a great. So you can play this game flawlessly. It's at least 60 frames per second most of the time. And uh, you have no problem playing this game, Death Stranding. The next game we tested here was Grid Legends. And uh, what do we get here? So we take a look. We got the 1080p preset medium VSync on, frames per second unlimited. We were seeing about 45 to 56 frames per second on this game here. And uh, this is obviously a driving game if you haven't played it before, but it's a good test to compare to other systems. And uh, 45 to 56, you know, sometimes we even got a little higher than that, sometimes into the 60s, but it wasn't that common, maybe in slower scenes and stuff, but totally playable as well. Grid Legends at 1080p preset medium. All right, another game people test all the time is Resident Evil 4. So what do we get? And obviously you guys know this game, at least I hope you do by now, right? You go around and chase zombies and stuff around. Well, what do we get on this? Right here, Resident Evil 4, 1080p prioritized performance mode. That's the mode we were in. 46 to 58 frames per second. I have 51 up here. So you can see that this game is totally playable as well. Resident Evil 4 with the M4 Air, not a problem. 
All right, next we tested Sims 4. And a game I don't really play that much, but I know a lot of people love that game out there. So what do we get here? So for Sims 4, 1080p ultra settings here, this gets 100 to 130 frames per second. Up here we have 106 going right now. So you can see obviously that some of these games, they can play really, really well. These are not, you know, when you get into some older titles. So if you like going back and playing some of the older titles, you wait maybe a couple years, you know, 100 to 130 frames per second is pretty big here. Overall, obviously that's playable. This next game I may actually play myself. I actually like this game. This is Sniper Elite 4, and we have the 1080p Ultra settings here. So 1080p Ultra, and if you look over here, it's 50 to 61 frames per second here. Obviously, it's 52.94 up here, but overall, I think this is actually a game, again, totally playable. Now, if you're playing for competition and stuff like that at 50 to 61 frames per second, if you dip below 60, it may not be optimal, but for fun, it's perfectly playable. You can play it all day and have a, just a blast with it. So Sniper Elite 4, it's going to be basically 1080p, works on the M4 Mac, MacBook Air. I was going to say the Mac Mini because I use it so much, but the MacBook Air. And then finally, again, this is a little bit of an older game, but if you do play competitively, you can actually play on a MacBook Air with this one. This is League of Legends. If you run it at 1080p, which you probably would want to do, and you run in Metal Graphics Beta, there's a way to do that. You make sure that you do it that way. But take a look over here. It was 190 to 260 frames per second, 221 up here. Even with some action scenes and stuff like that, it might dip into the low, you know, the high 190s, 180s, but then it'll go way up to sometimes 260, 270. So League of Legends, you can play, you know, in a competition competition if you wanted to at that frames per second, although you'd probably want to go on a, on a Windows system. But overall, I think it's actually it just shows you the power of the M4 MacBook Air. Okay, where does this leave us with the M4 MacBook Air? And it's really quite simple. I'm not going to tell you if you should upgrade, all right? If your work performance is being affected overall, then you should probably upgrade. If you just use it for basic stuff and you've noticed no ill effects of the M1 or the M2 MacBook Air, especially the M2 because I use it myself even for 4K video editing, then you probably should not upgrade at all. The M1's a little bit closer. The M2, I'm probably saying, you know, it's just not, not enough stretch there. So overall, I think, now one thing that you may, may force you to do with those with 8 gigs of RAM, obviously, on the base, base level of the M1, this you know the new ones come with 16, and that's a huge difference between the RAM. So the RAM might be a more of a reason than the CPU, in my opinion here. But again, I can't really tell you. It comes down to your workflow and what you're doing. Are you being affected daily? I mean, don't forget the M5 MacBook Air will be around here like within a year or so. And that's actually going to have some more substantial changes to it. We're thinking a different screen. Now, it's not going to probably be OLED, I can tell you that, but it's probably going to be, you know, a higher hertz screen maybe. We may have some different ports. It's going to be a redesign. We're thinking on the next one, the M5 MacBook Air. So that's going to be coming out in about a year. So you got to weigh that into your equation as well. If the M1's working for you, wait for that one. If you're kind of on the cusp, maybe wait for that one. But if you actually, I mean, are having any problems whatsoever and you're getting money from your, your computer on a daily basis, then opt for the M4 MacBook Air. It's totally worth it. Oh yeah, and if you're coming from an Intel Mac, it's probably totally worth it unless you're just doing basic emails. And also if you're a gamer, if you do gaming on the M1 and it's just, just barely too slow for you, the M4 is going to fix that for sure no matter what. But you probably should just buy a Windows gaming PC or something like that if that's your main reason for buying a Mac. But overall, you can see in some of these things on some of the older titles and even some kind of mid-range titles, you're going to get in that 50 to 60 frames per second on a MacBook Air. Who would have thought, right? So overall, you can still play those games if you want to dabble. But competitively or things like that with your friends, I don't know. It's not ready yet. And then the final thing is, is if it gives you some joy, right? We all get joy from buying things every once in a while. So then you have to factor that in just a little bit, but only a little bit in there. So if you're going to get some joy from it, you know, obviously, and you want to sell your M1 and get the M4, I would say go ahead and do it. You only live once, but just make sure you're doing the smart thing there. Um, anyways, I hope this video helps you just understand this. It's just one piece of peeling the onion back. And should you upgrade to the M4, what's the M4 all about? I gave you some numbers here. You guys can do what you want with them. We'll talk to you in the next video. I hope you guys like these. Peace.